Up next on Inside Champ Car, a newbie from the racetrack. Welcome to Inside Champ Car. I'm Brian Bolanski. Bill Strong is up above from somewhere. What do they call the? What is the Colorado State motto, Bill? It's the not Keystone? a bear. Yeah. Well, anyway, he's in Colorado. <laughs> we'll just say that. <laughs> somewhere in Colorado. Somewhere in Colorado. Sit. Yeah. You're not at. You're not at the. Um, uh, what is the the facility for for tracking the incoming missiles? No. Oh, yeah. That's uh, on the other side. On the other side of, of Colorado. The state. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I am in uh, outside Hallett in Bennett, Colorado. Bennett? Um, okay. Not Hallett. Not Hallett. I'm I going can't. to Hallett Friday. Yeah, sorry. It's been a really, really long, <laughs> disappointing day. See, but, um, see how this works, yeah. Scott? <laughs> yeah. So, I, yeah. So, I'm in uh, High Plains this weekend. Got so, it. Uh, myself, Ray, and uh, um, what's his name? Jimmy. Yeah. Jimmy. We drove out today. And uh, from Gingerman this past weekend. And that's where Scott Miller, our today's guest, uh, started racing on Saturday. So, yep. Scott, tell us a little about yourself, how you got started in racing, and uh, a little bit about your team. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. I, I really appreciate it. Um, wonderful. Long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> I <laughs> love it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, let's see, how did I get started racing? It's genetic. Uh, actually, I think my first racing memory i have a memory of my dad racing on the dirt track when i was like three or four and i was up on the fence after i think he put the car over the fence on the back side of the berm so it's nice uh yeah that's that's a, a real fond memory uh, not, not I, nice that your dad put the car over the fence nice that that's your first no, memory not that i remember it right yeah <laughs> uh, I, you know my dad will claim i wasn't there that night i'm, I'm mixing my stories but um but no, he raced when I was a young kid. You know, my mom used to drive out like a 76 Firebird around. I have memories of sitting in the back of that car, you know, getting my, my head put back more than once. Um, but uh, I had a go-kart when we were a kid. My brother and I would grow up outside of town. And and I'm not talking about the new go-karts. This is like a yard plywood, cart. Plywood seat, no yeah, yeah. roll cage, helmet, no seat belt, five horse Briggs, you know, six years old, with five horse power underneath you when you weigh 55 pounds dripping wet. It was it was a good time. Yeah. All right. You know, it's funny. One of my earliest memories, car-wise, is we had one of those old station wagons where they had, like, the little rumble seat in the back. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, flip up. and Dad would let us sit in the back, and then there was this one road on the way to Milwaukee, and there was this – it was had a huge bump. And when you hit the bump fast enough, everybody in the back rumble seat would come off the seat by about six or eight inches, and then we'd plop back down. And he knew it would happen, so you know, Dad would do that every time. So I, I love the things we remember from kids. That was our dream car, was to have a station wagon like that. But no, we had a 1968 Dodge Charger. Oh, could be worse. Tough life. That's a tough life to live, Bill. Uh, rough childhood. Three, kids, three yeah. kids piled in the back, nice. mom and dad up front, and a 318 cubic inch V8 with a three-speed on the column. Ah, uh, three on three the, on the tree. tree. On the tree. Yeah. You know, we didn't have the good Charger like all the other kids had on the block. We had another, our next-door neighbor had a, a charger as well. Oh wait, that was a three eighteen as well. Sorry, that was a sixty nine three eighteen. Yeah, but, but yeah, did it have the uh, her yeah, shifter? It didn't have a good. I think he had an automatic. In oh, his. even so, worse. Yeah, even worse. Yeah. So on a three eighteen. So. There you go. Hey, there you go. Cars, but yeah, station wagons always fun, especially on road trips. Yep. But it had the wood, the fa the faux wood sides. It was a it was a sh uh, Ford LTD uh, oh, station is that wagon. A squire or what they call those? Yeah, the squire. Yeah, the squire. squire. Yeah, yep. squire yep. station wagon. Country squire. Oh, country like squire. Yeah. Yes, yep. a Ford family. My my grandfather worked for Ford for for thirty years. Wow. Um, so yeah, he was it was a so Ford really? assemblyman guy. You know, when when I got married, my wife and I our honeymoon went to Le Mans and watched Ugh. Ford race again in sixteen, and then snuck back behind the garages after the race was over, met Chip and met the team, and it's just. One of these lifetime experiences. So Too cool. Yeah. yeah. yeah How'd you sneak say. back there? Because I went over in 91 and I could not sneak anywhere. They would not let us go anywhere. It's an awesome story. My wife and I were on the tram to the track and she forgot our tickets back at our place. We had to go back. I was like, we're, we're going to be late. We're going to miss this on the second <laughs> day, right? The last day. And we got back on the tram and I noticed some some guys with a Ford GT shirt and I hadn't seen that shirt before. I said, where'd you guys get that? I've not seen it. I said, oh, we built, we made them. I'm like, oh, you guys are fans? Like, oh, we worked on the car. These guys are like 23 years old. Like, yeah, we were on part of the sort of Skunk Works design team. 
It's like, that's super cool. So we chatted them up. And then at the end of the race, you know, they let the fans back over the wall and right, back right. in the garage. And I was just hanging around. And I saw those guys. And I looked at my wife and was like, stick with them. Wherever they go, we go. Right. And we just pushed right back into the garage. Oh, with them. Yes. <laughs> it was just so awesome. Very cool. So yeah. It was a really, really neat experience. We had, um, we'd actually met one of the LMP2 teams on okay. the train from Paris to Le Mans. And they saw us during the, the pit walk day and invited us back into their garage. We actually kind of got in twice and just uh, super nice, nice, super, super awesome folks. They they race IMS as well. And so we've said hi to them a couple of times at the different IMSA races and just, you know, a, an amazing, amazing community of people. Really, it is. So, so this past weekend, you're at Gingerman. Was this your first Champ Car race? This is our third um which is like your first it's like your first so it's it's been quite a journey uh we, i bought the car in 2017. we first raced in 20 what kind of car so it's a 2003 volkswagen Jet. uh so b class car so it's 1.8 with a turbo so we bump up a class um uh, i chose the car because my daily driver was basically the same car and i, I knew that drivetrain could could take some beating that was something i knew something i was familiar with and so we went down that road um, took about five years to get it together, to do it right. And, and in that time, you, know, you start a family, the pandemic, everything else. So we raced our first right. race with Road America in, in 22. Um, and I literally parked the car and next to us was the good, bad, and the ugly and Bill's there, right? <laughs> and walking up and he's like, I'm Volkswagen, Jetta, like what is going on here? And so he was really ribbing me, which was great. He's just such an uh, easy laid back guy. Um, and uh, Tim was there with, with the Golf GTI. You know, what a super, super nice dude, real helpful. He had a bad race that time. Our next race was Gingerman last year. And then our third race was Gingerman this year. So we got, got Gingerman it. back to back, which was, which was really nice. Um, we set out from the get-go to kind of step through this. Step one is let's get the car reliable. We'll worry about speed later, right? We had one minor reliability issue at, at Road America. We resolved that for, for next time um made some suspension alignment adjustments uh saw a lot better performance in the car made uh basically two major changes between last year and this year and that was removing some weight from the car we didn't have time for the first pass and then continuing to drive the suspension alignment in a direction we wanted and we really nailed it on the alignment for this race um we went out and saw two to three seconds of lap improvement which was really oh fun. wow yeah and it was really exciting um it's usually my dad and i it's been a two-man team and then this go around my youngest brother joined us and uh, it's pretty funny. He went out on track on the practice day and put times down that were like four seconds left faster than we ever had. <laughs> so, uh, embarrassing, but happy for him. My dad's like, man, he's smoking us. I said, power to him. Go yeah, for yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, he's a, he's a pilot in the Air Force. And so he's, you know, he's got some of that well, uh, coordination. That's why. Right? That's it. And, I'm telling you. And Bill. that's why. Yeah. The that's Air why. Force. Uh, it's not the four years he spent on iRacing. That's got nothing to no, do with it. No, no. <laughs> But we had a really great weekend. Um, the car was doing great. We were running a really solid second place in our class all day. You know, that, that 383 Mazda, that car was just right. cooking. Um, and uh, it's, it's a bit of a funny story because we, we tried some stickier tires, spent some bucks, thought we'd give it a shot. Uh, my, my brother ran a really fast stint. I um, thought, man, these, these don't look good. I don't know if we're going to make it through the day when he came in after the second stint. Uh, I went, my dad went out for the third. I went out for the fourth stint. I looked at the tires, like, ah, there's a little tread on there on the outside. <laughs> I did one lap on track. I was like, oh man, we're driving on gravel. This, this isn't good guys. And so I brought it back in, turned the steering wheel. My brother's like, oh yeah, those are, those are cords. You got two hours to go. So we had to do it real quick. Our first, our first live tire change. Oh, uh, funny. Th that cost us the second place in the class, but you know, great learning experience. Uh, finished out Saturday, brought the car off or just post-race inspection, checking everything over, and found a crack in the steering knuckle uh, where mm. the tie rod fits into the steering arm. And so I uh, decided not to risk it. It's not something you want to break on track. Unfortunately, it was the one spare part I didn't pack, as, <laughs> as would happen. Uh, so, so we got to pack up a little early, head home. Um, but uh, that, yeah, that's how it goes, right? I, I, I always tell everyone, it, you got to have uh, the right expectations. And any day you drive the car on the trailer, as a minimum, is yep. a good day, yep. right? You know, we yep. did that. Everyone came home. We had a really great time. We learned a lot. Cars continue to progress. So you can't ask for much more than that, really, in your third race. Right. So we're really about that. So it's you, your dad, your younger brother. Do you have a crew? So far. Or is it just the uh, three of you? That's it. It's it's it. That's the group, right? Okay. Um, so that's got its ups and its downs. You know, we, we know <laughs> each other, but uh, all that pretense comes too, right? But it makes for a lot of a lot of joke and a lot of good time.
Yeah. So when you come in and you need to change tires and you're not planning on changing tires, I'm guessing, did you practice a fast tire change or had not even gotten to that point no, yet? No, no, <laughs> but, um, you know, uh, as you gather, an automotive family. And so kind of, kind of know what to do. Sure. Right. Um, and I was like, wait, wait, guys, one tool over the wall at a time. We've never done this, but put the torque wrench back, get the, get the, yeah, get the impact right. over here. Right? Um, I said, take your time. We're not in a win or lose situation. Let's get it right. And we'll go out and we'll keep pushing tomorrow's a new race. Right. So, so what tires were you using? They were the Advance, the A052s. Okay. Yeah, we had run RE71s previously, and they just made eight hours. And um, I'd ordered 71s. I ordered a set of Advance. We'll use one one time, one the next. Up, uh, quick, grabby, love it. But, you know, if they can't make eight hours, and it doesn't right. make a lot of sense, right? So, so. you're going to look at different type, different tires for yeah. the next race that'll I last think... longer? Yeah, that's that's the idea, right? If we can get eight hours out of the fronts, that's great. Usually we get the whole weekend out of the backs. I mean, it's front wheel drive, so the backs right. have one purpose. That's to hold the gas tank and the muffler up. So um, that's that's the, that's the goal. So we think going back to the Bridgestones uh, is probably the right ticket. We'll see. But now the car's faster, right? So yeah. cars sped up, uh, tires wear a little more. You, you guys know how that goes. So we'll right. we'll see. Learn, live and learn. So, learn. so, Bill, are, are most teams taking a whole eight hours on, on a single set, or are, are, are more teams changing tires halfway through or at some point in the race? I don't know. I think the teams with money will change as much as they want. The teams <laughs> without money will try and do, uh, you know, the longest-lasting tire they can get. I mean, right. it's up to the teams. So Yeah, because in, in theory, if you practiced it, you should be able to change tires and dump fuel in five minutes. So. Yeah. That's yeah. really not a huge time suck. Well, we have a new rule this year where you can only have one tool over the wall, and that's including the tire changer if you call him a tool. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's it's just one one tire at a time. So so is is the is the gas, is the fill dump can considered a tool? No, that's separate. You can't work on the car and fuel at the same time. Got it. Okay, that's so, see, I'm yeah. I'm trying to educate myself. So no, that's all right. Fueling that's has right. to be done. Cap's got to be back on the tank. Then you can start yep. changing tires. Then you can start changing okay. tires. That yeah. becomes a little more of a challenge because my guess is now you're down to maybe four, three and a half minutes to change tires. Well, if you do yeah. the fuel stops right, you can do them pretty darn quick. Yeah. I mean, Unless we, you got a stock we, fuel tank, if, that's a little bit of a limiter. It's a, yeah. yeah, yeah, we had a stock tank, and we could do about fifteen seconds of a you know five oh, gallon nice. drum. So, I got to yeah. do something with my vent line. I got to figure yeah. that out. That's, yeah, that's, that's exactly what it was. The vent line. Yeah, so, interesting. But then it's not a stock tank. Right. It's true. <laughs> you that's know. True. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. So, so uh, what? Go ahead. I was gonna say, so so what's the what is the plan to eliminate the knuckle problem for next time? Other than to have yeah, another that's, one that's there. That's interesting. We'll get we'll get super nerdy here. Um stock Volkswagen front steering knuckle, and I've seen two variants over the years. Uh the one we're running now is the the taper for the the tie rods just machined right into the casting. And I've seen one where there's a steel insert in place. And mm. I thought the first time that someone had made a repair, but I realized it was actually a part modification. And so I'm wondering if the factory discovered this. Hmm. uh stress wow. point at some point and support that with a steel insert so um i'm going to be on the hunt for a pair of those steering knuckles anyone's got some some audi steering knuckles out there they want to they want to offer up I'm, I'm all game <laughs> um hopefully that helps resolve it uh it also could have been you know that way before right i mean you can imagine someone in a repair shop years ago took an impact gun to a, a tie rod nut over torqued it put too much stress on it so it's hard to say when you're running you know used yeah. parts so is that Did a part of the history of this car before you bought it yeah, that's a funny story. Um, uh, someone had it and uh, went a little Fast and the Furious style with it. I had the cheapest coilovers you could imagine lowered. I bought it, it had been rear-ended. So the car had been rear-ended, the, the right rear quarter, uh, nothing structural. Uh, so I, I taught myself bodywork, which involved driving to a, a Volkswagen uh, parts shop that happened to be about 100 miles away. I literally took the car, wrecked with the trunk not shutting, drove it there. They had another car in the yard, and it's like, what do you need? I was like, I need to replace that part. And he's like, hang on. He went out and got a tape measure and went back to the lot and got a tape measure. took a sawzall. Really chopped the back corner of this car off with a sawzall. I stuck it in the trunk, drove it back. Awesome. Uh, you know, very, very shade tree. Uh, it's, it's, it's probably the shadiest thing I've done. Got a, a, a 3,000 pound ratchet strap, put one end on the car, welded a buckle to it, the other around an oak tree, and sort of pulled out what I could. Yeah. And then taught myself body. That's, <laughs> so, yeah, that's not. <laughs> 
that is how most of us all start doing that stuff. Right. You yeah. Know? It's now, then now you find look, out it's it's much easier if you just pay the body shop guy three hundred bucks and he'll. Do it. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Now, the rest of the car was was really quite an engineering project. Uh, engineer by trade, mostly software, but have that level of rigor and everything's been data driven. Right. Got a got an AIM data dash in the car. Uh, oil temps, oil pressures, fuel pressures, uh, running that in a stock configuration. What is the norm, right? What is this drivetrain used to? How do we need to uh, make adjustments to try and stay there? So the oil cooler kept the temps down, right? Watching those trans mm -hmm. temps. The front brakes, you know, many teams will tell you, don't race a car that doesn't have a racing pedigree or platform. Uh, hundreds of hours for the front <laughs> brake setup, right? You know. Yeah. Uh, Granite surface plates out with with the the gauge block shims and you're measuring everything and setting it on the wheel and making sure everything's going to fit and you're on the phone with Wallwood checking clearance you know requirements and um, so the brakes are phenomenal but the amount of effort to design that took just tons and tons and tons of time. So d this is a Volkswagen. Does it have lug bolts? We went to studs. Very smart. Uh, because uh, <laughs> otherwise, you know, there's just there's no way. Yeah. Right. There's no way. Yeah, I did a 24-hour race with lug bolts once. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and I told the owner of the car that if you would like me back, this is a modification you are going to make before the next race, and uh, and and lo and behold, the modification was made. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the worst part about those lug bolts is is not just that, but um, most aftermarket wheels, the the lug nuts a taper, it's right. a straight taper, and on Volkswagens it's a ball, and so you go to put those ball lug bolts in and. Why are my tires not staying on, right? Why yeah. are the wheels not staying on? Yeah. Yeah. So anyone races Volkswagen knows this. I'm I'm, I'm preaching to the choir out exactly. there. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So very cool. So what what's next on the the other than the the, the ball joint that went bad? Yeah. What's next yeah. on the development of this car? I was actually uh, on the phone with my dad today. Yeah, what's next? You know, uh, there's more weight to be taken out. You know, our first two races, the, the doors were just the interior panels were pulled out, right? So, so getting those doors uh, trimmed down, you know, we've got some weight in the front of the car. We'd love to get another 50 to 100 pounds out. It's mm -hmm. going to be tough. Mm -hmm. It's going to be tough. You know, it's a car to the 2000s, and it, they're just not as light as the stuff out of the 70s and 80s. Sure. Um, and then uh, there's talk about maybe trying to, to bring a little more power to the engine, right? It's just completely stock right now um, with the turbocharged engine, right? More power is easy, but it comes at a risk and a price of fuel and other things. So we'd love to go find a, a test day somewhere to see what might be possible. We're right. just short of two hours on fuel now with the stock tank. So, you know, more power needs more fuel, drives more cost. Right. You, you guys know how that goes. But um, we're feeling really good on the reliability. You know, we've not had any major failings. Uh, knock on wood, I don't have any. I got a repair manual. It's as close to wood as I can get. Um, uh, so that's, that's the hope. And then the drivers, you know, uh, we know the car's got more speed. Uh, that's that's a lot of seat time. It's a lot of practice. We've been yeah. trying to, to connect with some driving coaches, um, see who's out there, even on a practice day, right? Someone's around for a practice day, wants to, to buddy up with us and, and teach us uh, some tricks, show us ropes. We'd, we'd love that too. So. Improving the the nut behind the wheel instead of the nuts on the car. Yeah. So twelfth overall. Yeah, yeah, we were running eighth until that tire change. Well, uh, that's all right. Finished just ahead of the other VW, which is two D two idiots and a garage of Sheboygan Auto Helpers, which is Tim yeah. Elliott. Yeah. Such a nice. And, uh, yeah. yeah, and um, that's kind of cool. Being you know you're in the top fifteen fairly new team against some big guns you know you had no there's no z and mazda won the saturday race yes very mustache works has been running with us for a very long time they've got a well-developed bmw uh yeah. buck snort showed showed back up racing after a bunch of years absence and uh they i think they um they finished fourth on sunday and third i think it was yeah and third on saturday and then Fendurance with their infinity finished fourth and fifth was turning concepts of Porsche Boxster. I thought they were supposed to win everything. They did. That Boxster um, is such a fun car on track too. They raced, at least in my sense, very respectful yeah. for the speed differential we had there. So I appreciate that. Yep. Yeah. Now we're now our motorsports with their Mini Cooper. And guess what, Brian? Yes. A Mini Cooper finished first in F class. Nice. And third overall on Sunday. Wow. They finished they finished six overall on Saturday. So that's the first time we've had a, a top three for a, uh, a F-Class car. And, uh, 
you know, the Big Fish or William, yeah, what was it? Williams uh, Racing and their Miata and Big Fish Racing. So lots of Miatas in this race at this track. Um, I guess this track is kind of suitable for the, the shorter wheelbase, um, lower horsepower cars. Yeah, that's that's been our take too, right? You know, I enjoy Road America. That's such a fun track. Um, my dad will be the first to tell you, yeah, I don't like getting blown away on the main straight by a 30 mile an hour difference. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. much our suit. So I, I think there is something to that. I don't, I, don't, I don't think you're too far off the mark there. What's the hardest part of Gingerman racing on Gingerman? Ginger. Um, the hardest part of racing Gingerman. Boy, that's a great question. Um, for me, there's a couple of corners that have been tricky for me that I, I don't feel like I've got right to as, as, a, as a tough one for me. Um, five and six used to be a little tricky. I got a lot of better. Uh, there were a couple of cars that were really close in speed. The Williams Racing, that 288 car, they're also out of St. Mm -hmm. Louis. Um, you know, they finally made a round there for about 10 or 13 laps. And, and I know one of those drivers, you have to be in that stint. I was like, all right, show me. Because I know you're fast and you just can't get around me right now. Show me. Yeah. And you get behind the car and I can look at the dash. I'm like, oh, I picked up a second a lap. All right, now now I see some spaces here. So I think that's um, those are the ones for me. I learned my lesson on 10 last time around after I took a trip to the beach and that little sand trip out there. So, yeah. Yeah, that road um, comes up on you pretty quick. It does. It does. There's a place to be and there's, there's places not to be. Uh, right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had, a, I had an incident on Saturday in my last stint. Um, I, uh, I was in the lead coming into 10. Another car tried to take the inside line. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> good luck in there, right? And, uh, you know, back came loose, pushed me out wide. I, I barely kept it on track. I was kind of already on the radio, like, you tell race control, a car, you know, again. <laughs> right. And at that point, they had pulled over, arm out the, you know, uh, wave in, apologize. I'm like, okay, okay, fair enough, fair enough. You know, so <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, a right. fun, it's a fun track. And, we really enjoy it there. It's nice facilities. The people there have always been so nice. Um, you know, got pulled in last time around, right? So we, we really enjoy it. And that town, South Haven, is just, just beautiful. It's a really fun town. So this is your third race? That's right. Okay, so what was your first race like, and where was that? That was Road America. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's where we started. Now, I had been up there to watch an SVRA race, an IMSA race, right? So I, I knew of the track, but that was... That was something. And we got some rain, I think, on that Sunday morning. I was in when it rained. I, I loved it. That was before they repaved, you know, so you get some different uh, track surfaces. Uh, so that was that was interesting. Um, I I had a blast there, you know, and it was it was so fun just the day-to-day -day progression. I'm like, oh, I can take 10 more miles an hour through that corner. Holy hmm. smokes, right? You, you start to build some trust in the car. Now, was that your first wheel-to-wheel -wheel race? Uh, technically not. I technically had one one evening at a dirt track 15 years ago. Hmm. Um, okay. The family gives me a good hard time about that. There was some spins. There was some more <laughs> spins. There was oil sloshing onto a header, getting a little bit of an engine fire. You know, it was a great entry into wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing. <laughs> right. <laughs> so so yeah. after that, you come back 20 years or 15 years later. 15 years later. What, what, and we go with the wheel. What's going on in the and, middle? What's going on in the middle? Um, get life, finishing okay. school, getting a job, you know, saying, hey, I want to go do this, right? And uh, getting my wife on board, buying a car, thinking like, well, have, I'll do it myself. Me and my dad will come by sometimes. We'll do this in like a couple of years, be racing, you know, fast forward five years. So yeah. just that perseverance, right? Hanging in there, getting through it. Um, and, you know, we did actually, before the car was ready, we did come volunteer two races. It was actually the first time I ran into Bill and some of the folks. That was really helpful. I've, I've, Provided that recommendation to others. I'm looking to get in. What would you do? And rent a seat is always a common answer. But I would say go yeah. volunteer to race. See what it's yeah. like being on the the operational side of the wall. You'll, you'll gain a lot of respect for the people and, and some of the the chaos and the madness and what they've really got to handle. So sure, it's a really great way to meet people. See how things work. Sure. Well, it's also a good thing to see what other teams are using and how they're doing things, so that you don't go out there and waste your money on unneeded Absolutely. parts. You know. Watching good teams do pit stops and watching bad yeah. teams do pit stops was eye opening, beyond eye opening. Yeah. Right? And it was so neat to come back with my team and say, "Hey, be careful not to do this and this and this and this. Remember these things, you know." So yeah, and just understand that the board doesn't like it when I say bad teams because everything is <laughs> sure, a good sure. Team. We don't uh, have those who are that. less, but... those who are less efficient or effective at pit stops. How's that? I shouldn't say bad teams. Yeah, or need to just, or just need to go to school and learn how to do this stuff. Yeah. I, and, and that's, yeah, I think that's something yeah. we hear a lot. And it's so true. We don't have bad teams. Um, in the last two races, I've been both by Tim. 
out of Sheboygan, and in the Duck Hawk race, yep. and there's a little number 11 Fiero. And at every race, they've had difficulties, and they're the most easy going, having a good time, helping yeah. out people. So, in fact, when we requested pit stalls, I'm like, put me by those guys. We have a super great time. We help each other. Yep. Yep. You know, those poor Duck Hawk guys, their, their garage flooded not too long ago. Car was underwater. They grabbed everything they could oh, wow. to come race, broke a CV shaft, still having a good time, helping us do pit stops. You know, you just, just such good people. We're all here to race, have a good time. You know, yeah. so I can't say enough about the teams and, and the people that run the organization. I really can't. It's been awesome for us. Uh, another good recommendation is go to a, go to an IMSA race and spend time oh, yeah. behind the pit wall, not watching. Cause everybody wants to watch cars go fast and that's fun and yeah, all, sure. but go to like the Rolex or the Sebring 12 or any of those. And, and spend some time behind pit road and watch the way the team set up their pit stalls, the way everything has a place and is a place for everything and, and how they just think and work. Even if you do it for an hour or two, that's a huge amount of, amount of benefit for that. When you come to do, you know, the endurance racing with champ car or, or anyone else that does uh, indoor endurance sports, there's a reason why they're pros and you know, you can learn a lot from them. The organization well, I, structure I, I, is awesome. Yeah. And, and oh, sorry, sorry, Bill. Um, sorry. The smaller IMSA races, I think, are amazing for this because yeah. you can get in the paddock and you can be so close and it's not such a big deal. It's not right. like it's a, an F1 race or an Indy car where you're 200 feet away, right? You can be 10 feet from the action, right. the behind the wall action. It's so great. Yeah. I um I, I got to sit with uh, Bill Riley's team while uh, they raced at VIR you know, kind of embed myself and you're right. It, you just see so many things, but the crazy part is there's not much difference in what we do. There is I mean, not the, the dollar amounts, a lot different, a lot more tires. Um, the fueling is slightly different, but everything is almost exactly the same. They have the same issues, the same right. parts, you know, can, you know, th things can break, um, the same fueling issues, you know, things not working right. Um, but yeah, it's it's fun and it's I kind of eye opening that oh they, they have the same thing you know yep. same things go wrong as we do. But, so well, but, it's just, but there's a lot more money and and they're a lot more methodical when something goes wrong, you yes. know. Whereas a lot of times we are like oh my god what do we do uh, run 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 yeah. go throw tools at it. But when something goes wrong, they're usually really methodical, really thoughtful in how they attack that problem. Um, and I think there's there's a lot to be learned from that. So. And, and when you do, if you ever do volunteer to go to work with the NIMSA team, you will probably get picked to be the really shittiest jobs ever. Yeah, like clean, cleaning the tar off the front of the car. <laughs> no, getting on top the of the trailer yeah. when, you, when, they, when they accidentally hear that you're afraid of heights to get up on the trailer and put the awning up. Yeah, mm -hmm. things like that. <laughs> yeah, pretty cool. Hey, real quick, um, do you have door glass in the car? Um, we have the just the windshield. Just okay. the windshield. We okay. had the rear glass until this race. It was one of those weight reduction options. Got we don't have to put the legs in the back. And we had it in the rears. Um, you know, for the longest time, the car parked outside. So that's one of the yeah. reasons we had the full doors. Sure. I don't have to worry about the car cover blowing off and the door seals right. were there. And right. it was really funny. We we raced last time with the door seals and didn't think about it. And I 14 pounds in door seals. You know, wow. So it goes out of there. Yeah. <laughs> that's huge. That's a lot of, crazy. That's a lot so of weight. Else? German what engineering. Else? What else did you do to, to reduce weight on those cars? Yeah, that's it's a great. So the rear glass, uh, the back doors still open and closed. You know, put a little bit lighter, just aluminum bracket hinge on. Uh, took those down to basically the skin and a little bit of structure, so they don't completely go go waffle. And then took the factory dash bar out. So we had the factory dash bar uh, just because all of the dash itself and a lot of the ele uh, electrical harness mounted there. So um, every time I take the dash out. And I clean up the harness and and, and re reshroud and everything. Like, oh, this will be like a few hours. Like, three days later, my back sore from sitting on the floorboard <laughs> while I'm, you know, right. you know, resheathing wiring. And um, but it always comes out cleaner and easier. Uh, and so that's that's been a big big help. But you know, you spend seven hours on the harness and you get a pound and a half of wires out. It's it's such <laughs> right. it's so worth the time. Of course, of course. <laughs> and typical German, they tend to use like fifty wires for when like the the Americans or the Japanese only use one or two. I have more ground wires yeah. um, than I knew what to do with. So never a grounding problem, but, but you know, 10 pounds of brown grounding wire for, yeah. for Volkswagen. Every week. <laughs> Thanks guys. <laughs> so what's next for you guys? Where are you, where are you off to next? 
That's a great question. We were looking. We were hoping for uh, we were hoping for Joliet, but I think some some travel is going to inhibit that. So maybe Mid Ohio, uh, maybe Road America. Again, not the best track for us, but such a fun place, okay. right? Now Nelson would be a good a good track for that car. I was car. thinking that too. So it's been we have to look at the schedule to see what's out there. Yeah, um, that's a great again, I, track. As I mentioned, you know, try to find some more driver instructor opportunities. We've, we've been a few HTB, HPDEs that helps, but. A little twenty-minute session, as much as you get little tidbits, it's not the same as as getting a lot of time and actually you know trying to develop uh, right. specific skill sets a little more. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, very cool, yeah. very cool. Anything yeah. else for Scott, Bill, before we let him go? No, I think that's about it. I mean, it's uh, great to see new drivers out there, new teams, and uh, you know, Gingerman. You know, we saw some some internet rumbling about how not a lot of cars showed up, but that was a that was a good race this weekend it was had a really, lot of really good yeah, yeah. Um, you, you guys might have got a couple of sponsors i'd like to, to shout out yeah, that was my um, next question yeah there you go so so first up um uh, foremost a csm performance they put their their swag on today so uh they build some of the best precision hub stand alignment systems you're ever going to find in the world and i'm not exaggerating um the level of, of detail that goes into these is beyond insane uh, it, it's a full system, right? So, so laser alignment, and uh, I'm fortunate enough to have some some early prototype parts to just the stands. But when you bolt lasers on a car, and you can sit and turn a uh, steering angle, you know, and thrust and offset and tow, just be like, ee, there it Wait, is. Wait, isn't it? Isn't it lasers? That's lasers. Yeah, <laughs> it's beyond impressive. And you know, this is it is it is pro level, right? You know, uh, IMSA teams, TCR GS and GTD teams. Porsche Cup, Trans Am, SRO, uh, all sorts of race shops are using this stuff. And uh, and the the owner sent me a tech tip to share. Oh, oh sweet. When it's been dropped. Wait a second. But... Uh, we have to play wait, the tech wait, tip wait, music. Wait, wait. Are you ready? Go for it. Yep. Tech tip time. Okay, go. Yeah, so one of the things we were doing early on, we were playing with different toe alignments. And I said, man, we got to have all these numbers at the track and I'll have to get that stands out. And it's like, whoa, whoa. Set the toe and then uh, make your adjustment, you know, eighth of a turn on the tie rods or quarter, and then measure the new toe and have all these pre recorded. Like, That's all mindset teams do, right? So I want X toe. I know it's an eighth plus. I know it's an eighth minus. And I was like, oh, that's so simple. Have all those, those uh, yep. adjustments. Pre-computed, and again, this might not be a big secret, but it, it helped me, and I'm not sure if others are, are aware. But it was a really great for us, just trying more or less out versus in. Um, super, super helpful for us. So, one of the simple things that got shared our way when we started getting a little more finesse into our alignment settings. You can do the same thing with your coilovers on corner weights. You yep. know, if you learn that one rotation takes you however many pounds in whatever ro in whatever direction, then you can do you know kind of rule of thumb changes at the track without having to get the scales out so you got it. same basic got idea it. that's fantastic yeah um and it's also she... important by the way on the coilovers is to mark the spanner with a little bit of <laughs> of, yeah. of nail polish or something so you can actually count the numbers around because right, I, right. don't ask how i know how that could go bad but i know how far was it Two ish, it's two ish. It's fine. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the other sponsor we, we've had is uh, machine services and repair specialists. So it's um, machine repair, grinders, mills, lathes, anything in the machining world. They're located in the St. Louis area here. Service modification upgrade. They've been doing this for thirty plus years. Um, and when you have a machinist in your sponsor list, and you need a little work done. That's it's a really sweet thing to have access to. Very nice. And. And I'll make a call it to Discovery Parts. They don't sponsor me, but they are a sponsor of the Series and B-Class, and I've been shopping with them for years, and I cannot say enough about the customer service. You know, even this last race, myself and my, my brother, the new driver, had things we ordered, and they called and said, hey, Product X isn't in stock. Do you really need it right away, or can we get it to next week? It's like, oh, I need it, and we're going to be at the track. We'll drop ship it to the track. Don't worry about the cost. Right, so they really, really take care of us. Um, so really happy to to have them as a champ car sponsor, and they've been wonderful for for my drivers and I. All right, you forgot the one most important person. Yeah, that's my wife. Yes. Yeah. That's, <laughs> so last but not least, <laughs> it's not possible without her. 
uh, the, the support over the years, uh, the break bleeding, the holding this part, and then the, the week up as we prep, I, it would not be possible. There's just- oh, Wait no. a second, your wife helped you with the break bleeding? She's a break bleeding professional and nobody does it better. I don't care what wow. pressure bleeder you've got. Uh, you know, she's got the, the foot yep. and the leg to do it just, just right. Mine won't even do it. She gets claustrophobic in the car and she says, yep, done, never again. Yeah. All yeah. right, Scott. So you can se you can send the check to two nine nine East Sierra Mod. No, I'm just kidding. There you go. There you go. I love it. I love it. Well, hey, I, I really appreciate you guys having me. Thank you. Hey, uh, thank you. To, to all the work behind the scenes, to all those people volunteering and making this possible. I, I know what it, that's like, and it's it's really great to be on the other side of it now, actually racing. So much appreciated. Cool. Thank you very much. All right, that's our guest Scott Miller uh, joining us this week. Appreciate it. off a pretty decent run, even though you weren't running at the end there. But that's uh, uh, all a part part of the learning process and uh we look forward to seeing you back out there at a race at a track somewhere down the road yeah you guys have a great night thank you so much thanks scott cool all right bill what do we got going on next hey let's just talk about the race this weekend real quick uh nosy and mazda took first place on saturday the eight hour race also did the uh best lap of the weekend at a 141.737 um yeah that's a swapped Mazda, I think it has a 2000 something, something or another engine from another Miata. So pretty, pretty, pretty quick car. Bavarian Mustache Works finished second and Buck Snort returning to racing with us finished third. Um, Finn Durance fourth, Turn In Concepts fifth, Wittenauer Motorsports sixth overall with their F Class Mini, Williams Racing Group seventh, Big Fish Racing uh, Mazda Miata in eighth. Just me and Evan in ninth. Begley Motorsports with that beautiful 1972 Datsun 510 in 10th. And Team Midlife Crisis in 11th. Miller Autosports down in 12th. And 13th was Two Idiots in a Garage, a Sheboygan Auto Helpers, Tim Elliott's uh, team, and Hakuda Miata I finishing love that. 14th. <laughs> I know. Brinks <laughs> Racing and their Nissan 240SX in 15th. Money Shift Racing in 16th, JSK Racing and their Nissan Altima in 17th. They had some uh, mechanical issues this weekend with that car. Okay. Bourbon Dogs Racing uh, Ford Probe GT. We haven't seen we haven't seen a Ford Probe GT out uh, racing with us in quite a while. Finishing 18th, Duck Hawk Racing and their Pontiac Fiero in 19th. Parts Badger finished 20th. They had some teething issues as well on that car. Uh, lots of parts breaking on it. I mean, just weird things, you know. But that's part of the teething process on a brand new car. Dipsticks Racing, Nissan Sentra in 21st, and Utter Chaos uh, Lexus down in 22nd, their IS300. And in Saturday, Sunday's race, Bavarian Mustache Works takes the win, while there's no Z and Mazda finishes second, still with uh, the fastest lap of the weekend with a 142. Wittenauer Motorsports are first F-class in the top three of all time. Buck Snort racing in fourth. And let me tell you, the end of that race was amazing. Buck Snort, if that race had gone on maybe two or three laps, I'm pretty certain Buck Snort would have caught him and passed him. But uh, that was a great race at the end. Duck Hawk Racing finishing fifth. Hakuna Miata finishing sixth. Money Shift down in seventh. Williams Racing in eighth. Begley Motorsports in ninth. Just me and Evan down in tenth. Finn Durance in eleventh. Brinks Racing in twelfth. Two, two idiots in a garage and Sporting Auto Helpers in thirteenth. Team Midlight Crisis down in fourteenth. Uh, and Parts Badger in fifteenth. Car did a little better. Turn in Concepts in sixteenth. Big Fish Racing in seventeenth. Uh, Miller Auto Sport in, did not start, so 18th place. But, yeah, it was a great weekend of racing. The weather was awesome. Um, it was beyond awesome, actually. It was really good. Nice. Um, we were expecting, you know, four, four or five foot of snow up there in Michigan. <laughs> but, uh, no, it was nice. Nice. I loved it. Very cool. I got to tell you, now uh, where that. Where are we at next? I was going to say, before you go to that, you know, now that the, Freddie, Freddie Mercury is not there anymore, I think uh, Hakuna Matata is now my new favorite <laughs> team name. Hakuna right. Miata. Uh, very, very cool. So, all right, up next, you're going to High Plains? Yeah, we are at High Plains, actually here right now. Um, we have a bunch of cars coming out here. I think 20 cars have signed up. We, I think we have a couple more that said they would show up. CU Boulder, you know, the yeah. uh, Colorado University yep. Boulder racing team has two cars now. Nice. They'll be here. Um, Bandits Racing, they're returning with their Pontiac Trans Am. 
that's going to be a tough car to win uh, or to beat. Yep. But uh, there's also some auto spec uh, Mi- or Mazda Mi- or Mazda Miatas that'll be here. And of course, Debbie does donuts in their BMW <laughs> 323i. Um, they're here. Dog Bite Racing, Farce India, Fetterhand Motorsports all the way from Arizona. Gorilla Sticker will have two cars as well. Low and Slow Racing, Mylon will be here. Again, that's another. The 150 car is pretty darn quick yeah. on this track. So they're uh, not low talent. or slow? Yeah. R5 <laughs> Racing, one day only, will be racing with us uh, with their car. Um, Silver Martini Racing and Team S. XT Racing in their Dodge Neon, Viking Chug Motorsports in their MX-5, and Whip Racing at the Ford Mustang. So it's going to be a pretty fun weekend. Um, Ray had never been out here, and it was kind of cool to show him the track. He, uh, he, that, It's a pretty cool track. You've been out here, right? Uh, I think I've, I've not been to High Plains, okay. um, but I, I'm, I'm familiar with the area. So you're close enough, and it's Tuesday. So what do you have planned between right. now and, and the weekend? Well, tomorrow I get to work okay. from my hotel room because I got, got a lot of work to catch up sure, on. Sure, sure. Um, Wednesday. Are you going? Today? Tuesday, Wednesday. Tomorrow's Wednesday. Yep, tomorrow's so Wednesday. Thursday we have to go set up Flagtronics at the track. Okay. So I'll be helping Jimmy and, and Ray do that. And then Friday we do the test day with uh, the track is doing a test day. And then we do uh, um, kind of prepping for with Flagtronics, making sure everybody's numbers and stuff show up right so that we're ready to go first thing in the morning with all the transponder numbers and the electronics numbers for the race so so high so, plains is 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 colorado springs ish right no it's uh east of denver oh east of denver okay yes okay because so i was going to suggest think making of an a- REO, think of an ario speedwagon song and you're looking east and you watch the sunrise <laughs> or sun yeah the sunrise in the morning that's that's where we're at okay okay so I was going to say y'all need to make a trip up to the top of Pikes Peak, but that's a bit of a hike from there. That's a while away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It yeah. would be worth it if you I didn't was... have to work tomorrow. Yeah, I have to work. Yeah. I have so much to do. I, I got you. I got you. And all <laughs> so of I us, a, I talk with all, all, all of us Champ Car peeps are appreciative of that work you're going to do tomorrow. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and I saw some stuff. People are saying that we're not doing enough marketing. Um. I don't know what's going on because we are. Maybe they're just not seeing it. I don't know. Send me an email. If you don't see our email send outs, our Facebook stuff yeah. going up, our Instagram stuff and TikToks and um, things like that. So let me know. I'm curious about why you're not seeing it. Yeah. You know, maybe they'll respond back to me. Maybe they won't. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. Sorry, I'm a little tired. We. <laughs> Well, it's then, all catching up with me right now. Then let's call it an early evening. How's that? Yes, because then Jimmy and Ray and I can go eat if they haven't already. <laughs> oh, I hope they waited for you. My gosh, they, they would wait for you, right? No. <laughs> all right. Yeah, they, I, who knows? I, they might. Uh, so, but, yeah, so we're racing this weekend, and then we head off. Uh, we get to go home for a couple of days, a week or something like that, and then we go to Watkins Glen. All right. And that race is quickly uh, – Getting to the point, of it's going to be a sellout. Let me look because I, I saw a, a bank account with a lot of money. Let's oh, see I what's like going that. On here, we are at ninety-five cars. Cool, hundred car cutoff, and five spots left. I don't want to hear you guys crying because we didn't let you know. Hey, five five spots left. There you go. And then we head over to Autobahn Country Club. That's a great little track. Yeah, um, twenty-five cars signed up now for that one. Um, that's going to be a fun fun race as well. Uh, and then then we uh, take a couple of weeks or a week off, and then we head to uh, Sebring for the f- one of the first overnight races we've done this year. Uh, the Sebring Under the Stars, 12 hours Very cool. um, from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And uh, right now we have 47 cars signed up. That will Wait, sell out. You mean from 6 so, p.m. Yeah, to no 6, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m.? No, 6 a.m. to 6 Yes, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Yes, Brian. <laughs> I'm like, I'm confused. <laughs> it's not hard to do, by the way. <laughs> that's, that's what I do. And then, of course, we head July 13th and 14th over to Nelson Ledges. 15, 15 cars signed up for now. Um, I know there's going to be more there. We've got a big uh, championship race going on between uh, Nelson Ledges, Mid-Ohio, and Pittsburgh. And that's going to be kind of fun, I think. Uh, some good prizes and uh um, giveaways we're going to do for that race, All right. or the that 
event, those events. So, so I, I got to tell you, right. folks out there, listen to me. Listen, to me. Brian, listen to me, folks. Just me and you talking, okay? I heard for a whole season of Inside Champ Car, people wanted to go back to Nelson, wanted to go back to Nelson. Why aren't you going back to Nelson? Get yourself signed up for Nelson. They took you back to Nelson. Now it's time to talk and put your money where your where your mouth was and get signed up for Nelson. It's a great racetrack. It's a ton yep. of fun. So, because you all asked for it, they did it. Now you got to sign up. So, uh, speaking yep. of yep. of signing up, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. If you haven't liked this episode, like. Do all that cool stuff. Anything else, Bill? If you hate the episode, just hit like anyway. Exactly. I love it. That's going to do it for another episode <laughs> of Inside Champ Card. you like what you hear, subscribe to the podcast and the YouTube channel so you won't miss any episodes. It would also be great if you share it on your social media channels. Comment on the Champ Car Facebook page, especially if it's a good one. We have new episodes every week. He's Bill Strong. I'm Brian Polanski. You're listening to the Racing Wire Podcast Network, and you are watching Champ Car Live. Take care, everybody. Have a great weekend, and go play with cars.